Well, the topic today is uh, wood burning. And Al Conard actually got me started in this. I, uh, my wood burning started out to be a, a soldering iron. And I would just, uh, between, between fixing electrical things, I would put a tip on here and I would sign my name on some bowls once in a while or maybe add a decorative edge or something, but I really hadn't done too much. And uh, Al encouraged me to take a class. I think it was selfish though. I think he thought it was gonna get canceled if they couldn't get one more person to sign up. So uh, he, said, he said it would really work out well for me. But I did, I enjoyed it quite a bit. And, and from the most part it was the exposure of new techniques and, and new things that you can do uh, with the burning. And it was a very elementary uh, class. It wasn't anything you know that uh, anybody should have been intimidated by. So we did some, some simple patterns. Uh, they tried to get you to do some, well, not they tried. We all did uh, you know, some boards, and we'll see these in a minute too, which basically shows the different uh, color, and not colors, but the different radi gradients of, of burnt that you can use to make your uh, designs. And one of the things that, that I liked the most was, uh, and Aaron was the teacher, was the um, ability to paint them when you're done. And I never thought about it, but if you use an acrylic paint, water-based paint, and and you thin them out, all of the burning will show through the paint. And that kind of kind of adds an interesting twist. And I had a couple of pictures. I don't have any examples anymore because they're gone, but um, I got a couple of pictures where you paint uh, a basically kind of a transparent layer of acrylic paint on the uh, item. And the wood burning creates the shadows that that kind of pull through and it's a really nice, uh, nice effect. And so after that happened, I ended up having to invest more uh, in a wood burner, but you don't have to. And that's, that's part of what I wanna talk about today. You can uh, very reasonably get a, a variable temp wood burning pen that um, costs between 20 and 30 bucks and you have multiple tips and um, the, the only downside is, you know, is that it gets a little, little hot and you gotta use pliers to change the tips while you're in the middle of a, of a project potentially. But um, I, I actually did one of my um, basket weave demonstration pieces, a storyboard using that same $20 um, wood burner so we'll, we'll cover that in a little bit too um, let's go into the slides oh yeah let's do the gallery yeah so this was a picture I actually had posted on on uh, Facebook a while back but it's a nice representation of the different things that you can do uh, with your wood burner um, I have two different weaves on here, left and right. Um, I actually went out on, on Pinterest, if you, if you go on Pinterest at all, and you know pick up ideas. And the one on the right was something that I found. And it was kind of a neat little uh, twist on the braid uh, in, a, in a basket weave. And then uh, the maple leaves in the middle, uh, various leaves on the bowl in the back, and then the bottom, front um, that was just kind of a random uh, bowl or a random design around the rim of the bowl um, again another variation on on basket weaving so this has some wide you know vertical uh, weaves with a narrow horizontal uh, this is a close-up of the uh, the bowl with the leaves on it Uh, this one turned out really well. I was very pleased with it. It probably is the most detailed uh, 
burning that I've done to date. Um, the, uh, each leaf started out with the same pattern, but obviously each one is completely different from the next because they're all individually burned. So every little, uh, every little line on there is done with the, uh, the tip of the wood burning pen. Uh, this one was, you know, the, the 45 degree weave around the outside edge. Uh, this was one of the first ones I did uh, with, you know, being really dark. Uh, it was also, a, it's, it's kind of an eighth inch thin wall vessel too, so it's very, very light. This one has the, uh, the branch with the pine cones and the pine needles. This one just got some uh, kind of like an ivy, like a vine kind of a, a design that went around the perimeter. And then I combined it with the, uh, with the beads on the top of the, of the rim. This one was part of our, our uh, collaboration that we did in June, May, June time, I guess. And an, another variation on the basket weave. So this one, this one was actually kind of funny because Jerry Kemberlin, I, I believe, was trying to stump me when he came up with this uh, glued up, off-center, dark, light wood. And uh, <laughs> I ended up using, I, I, I found the center point on his glue up, and then I used that same center point to uh, draw the circles for the basket weave. So this is a stamping effect. And I actually like these, and especially on the, uh, like this is a single turn bowl. So after I was done turning it, it warps. And it gives kind of a primitive look. I think that the two work well together. Uh, this was the, uh, the braided weave we talked about earlier. And this was an experiment. It didn't turn out as well as the, the overall look didn't turn out very well. Um, but I was trying to follow the green, the annual rings on this vessel. And then when I was all done, I didn't like it. And so I ended up burning that annual rings really dark in the middle with a, it's kind of a basket weave stamp versus um, drawing the basket weave. But the basket weave itself, I'm going to do another one of these because I liked how that turned out. If you see at the top, it, all the weaves get really narrow, and then they get wide at the, uh, at the perimeter, and then it gets narrow again toward the bottom. And I have another vessel of a similar shape, and I'm going to try to do the whole vessel like that because uh, it was really a nice uh, result. So this is what I was talking about with the paint. So when I took the class, uh, these were the things that we were um, experimenting with. And I just went online and I punched, you know, I found the snowman and the Christmas tree. And then, uh, uh, I want to say, not Roloff, what's his name? Olaf. Ro what is it? Olaf. Olaf, yeah, yeah. And. And I found those online, and, and then I burned them in. And part of what I'll show you today is the shading. So if you can see, like, on the, the bottom left snowman, it's a little more obvious. Well, actually, even on the upper right, it's obvious. Um, but inside the snowball on his body, you can see that it looks like it's a little darker uh, white-blue. And that whole circle is all the same paint. What ends up happening is the shading from your wood burning pulls through the paint and it makes it a subtle dark edge. And like with the snowman on the upper right with the hat, um, the bottom left edge of that circle is another example. Or even though you paint white over it, it's transparent and it, uh, and it bleeds through like that. It gives you a nice effect. Uh, this was a chicken, kind of did the same thing. Um, but this, something that I would want to point out on this particular picture is 
other than the straw that's on the bottom, almost all of my lines are not actually lines. They're a series of small dashes. So, in, you know, what, what, what we tend to do when we're learning something new, especially like in art, is when you draw something, you tend to draw it in lines. And the human eye sees that, and your brain interprets that. But in reality, it's probably a series of dots or dashes or rough edges. And those, the ability to create a line out of multiple little lines or multiple dots um, can really add to the effect of, um, you know, the work that you're, that you're going with. Next. Uh, this was uh, one of the items that I did, you know, I started during the class and I finished it, I think, after the class because this was very detailed. It's about eight and a half by 11. Um, and I did most of this with that $20, $25 wood burner. Um, and then I picked up, uh, you know, my, I'll show it to you here in a little bit, the razor tip. And it had a very fine tip and I was able to finish the feathers on it. But that, uh, I was pleased with how this one turned out. And then this is just a close up of the uh, cattails. And what I would point out here is the ability for white, or I should say no lines at all, to actually shine through and provide an effect uh, for your artwork. Next. And then this was uh, an owl. I just went on the internet and found a picture. Um, I printed it and I drew a grid on it. You know how you... I don't know, I probably had five squares left to right and maybe six or seven vertical. And then I was able to uh, uh, use that as my reference. I did use some carbon paper because, I'm, again, I'm not, I'm not an artist to the point where I can draw this stuff freehand. That is not my forte. Uh, but if I can get the outline... You know, I can, I can use the pens to create the textures and things. And uh, so after I've used carbon paper to draw the outline of the owl, then I used that grid over the picture to show me where I needed to put the feathers and the claws and the beak and the eyes. Uh, this was kind of a fun thing that I started doing. I actually... Uh, <laughs> My, my wife shops at Kohl's all the time, and she gets those 30% off coupons. And uh, we've stocked up on a bunch of different wooden spoons, and then I'll just burn different things into them. And they make good gifts. It's not wood turning, so to speak, although you could turn some, I suppose. Uh, but it's you know, kind of related to the topic today. All right. Any questions on that? All right. That definitely is science, eh, Tim? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, okay. Um, well, that's a nice body of work. That's, and all that's been done in the last, like, year, right? Yes, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and then, you know, you, the more you do it, you know, it's kind of like sitting at the lathe. You, you end up getting uh, a feel for the tool that you have. Plus you build the muscle memory. And one of the, um, the biggest changes that I noticed was the ability to hold the pen without allowing the heat to change how, how it's moving across the wood. So we'll get into that a little bit more, but as you start to burn, the, the wood disappears. It vaporizes. And if you're using a ballpoint pen, you can use kind of the same pressure on paper and draw, do your signature. You can do your drawing or even a pencil on paper. And, and the surface is consistent. But when you're wood burning, it vaporizes and it disappears underneath your pen. 
And what ends up happening is your pen will go in deeper when you don't want it to. It'll move faster than you want it to. It'll go slower than you want it to. And at some point, your brain and your muscles pick up on that and you realize that, oh, I have to do this in order to keep my lines consistent. I need to do this in order to uh, prevent overburning or skipping over the grain. Because like pine is an example where you go across pine and some of it will burn really fast and then you hit the winter uh, slow growth and it'll, the pen will just stop and it'll rise up. It actually goes up, rides higher on the wood and it gets really thin and light and then boom, you hit the, the uh, fast growth spring wood again and it, it dives in deeper and gets dark. So um, the muscle memory, um, what ends up happening is because you have a blade basically on these tips, um, not only are you moving your hand to get the direction you want, you have to rotate the blade so that it's carving in the direction that you want. And those would be the two things that I think uh, uh, would be the most kind of uh, aha moments is when you start to put those two things together, Re you know, pulling it through the wood and then being able to rotate your, your wood burning pen uh, to follow the line that you want to create. So, all right, kick her in. So now um, we'll talk a little bit about, you know, uh, tools, the wood selection, surface prep, burning, and finishing. So these are the tools. Uh, on the left is my soldering iron. So that was the first thing that I had. They actually give you multiple tips. So not only is there a soldering tip, which I think is the bottom one, um, that one's, you know, what you use for, you know, fixing the lights on your trailer or whatever. Then they have the universal tip, which is on the iron currently. So basically, it's a, it's a little angled wedge. Then they give you some stamps, which I found not real useful. Um, but what is nice about those stamps is you could create your own from them. So I, I actually took those and I filed off the, uh, the factory pattern that they gave you, and I did other things with them. And then uh, the very top one was a screw that I, a brass screw with the same threads as the rest of the tips. And then I flattened out the end and I put some grooves in it. And I actually still use this, you know, it, even though I bought a new uh, burner, the old burner still has some very useful uh, tips on it that helps to create the effects that I've been doing. The one, the one in the middle is very similar to that. Uh, however, they upgraded it and you can see there's a temperature selection uh, knob right on the cord and that does work. Uh, both of these irons are slow to heat. Um, so when you are using the middle one and you change the temperature, temperature, it's also kind of slow to change. So if you started out, let's say, with a, with a medium line set at about the middle temperature and you wanted to have some dark highlights or something or you wanted to do some stamping, right, really hot stamping, then you got to turn it up and then you wait a couple minutes. Um, then you got to do a couple of tests on some scrap wood and then when you get the effect you want then you can move forward so it's a little bit slow but again these two offer some some uh, textures and some tips that are very pleasing and and very effective uh, for for doing some of that um, the other thing is these two both get quite hot on your fingers so um, I would say you're, you're somewhat limited, you know, when you do some of the, you know, the more elaborate designs, like maybe those birds that I did, uh, your fingers get hot. There's just no way around it. And then on the right, uh, I ended up going with a razor tip. I know, uh, I, I think uh, Al got a coal wood. Jerry, what did you get? Jerry's got a coal wood. They're all very good. Um, and you can even buy adapters to use the pens for each other. For, you, know, you can use one power source with a, somebody else's pen. Um, 
the razor tip that you see on here, uh, there's five pens together and then there's one that's going horizontally, left to right. The horizontal one, actually you can swap the tips out on and those are the tips down below that I have currently. You can also make your own tips, which I have, I don't know, there's probably five or six of them in that group that I made myself for different effects. And some of them turned out, some of them didn't. I mean, that's just, that's part of the fun for me is, yeah, I tried it, it doesn't work, but. Um, the coal wood, the razor tip. I can't remember what the, there was another pretty common one out there, Matt Burnmaster. And you can't go wrong with any of those. You, know, you really can't. Um, what I did find out is when I took, I took my set over by Al that one day, and his coal wood has a lot more juice, I think, in it than, than mine, the, the razor. So I put my pen on his burner, and it got really red hot, really fast. And which is, you know, which is fine. There's, there's sometimes you might want a really hot pen. Um, but I think, um, you know, these burners and the pens are engineered together and they probably have a better working system if you, you know, if you're using them together, but I'm sure anybody could interchange them, uh, also. So, uh, here is a, here's a test piece. So this is kind of getting into, um, what we talked about with the, the different temperatures. In addition, this test piece is showing what you can do for moving your pen more slowly across the wood. So what you got across the top is the heat setting, and I didn't even bother with one. I didn't even bother with one and two because uh, it, it doesn't show you a whole lot, but uh, three through 10 is the setting on my unit. And that top row, I pretty much did, I'm going to call it a smooth, quick, consistent uh, pull with the, with the pen. So I just went 1,001 and I was done with that stroke, that, that stroke of the pen. On the second row, I made it longer. I tried to make it to the count of two. You know, was it two seconds? Maybe not. But I went 1,001, 1,002. So it, I stayed engaged in the wood twice as long. And then I did three and four. So as you can see, some of these, like maybe, um, uh, you know, number five setting, pulling it real slow at four is about the same burn as what you would get with number 10 with a one second pull. Um, but then you look at number 10 with, uh, a, you know, a slow pull on it, and that's where it really vaporizes the wood and the pen is red hot. and and if you like black, that, you know, that's how you get it because it blackens everything around it uh, versus, uh, you know, somewhere between three and six is where I'm, I'm doing, you know, 95% of my work, probably even three and between three and five. Um, but uh, that'll give you, to me, it's the most flexibility because you can slow down and still get some pretty heavy uh, dark lines. So going along and changing your pen tips, um, there's a lot of club members that are burning their names into uh, the wood. And this is a, an art on itself because it doesn't, again, it doesn't react like a pen or a pencil on paper because your, your paper, which in this case is the wood, uh, has um, variable densities and uh, it disappears as it burns. So you don't realize it, but as it's burning, you're creating like a groove into the wood and it's going down in. So this is an illustration of what happens, like on the bottom, um, it's, a, it's a piece of aspen, and on the top was oak, and oak is really difficult to burn in. So you can see my first row of one, two, three. Now I wasn't trying to, um, I wasn't trying to do this on purpose, but I also wasn't trying for a really clean set of numbers. I just kind of tried to write like I would if I was using a ballpoint pen and still being, still being careful. 
but you can see how it, it hits the light green, dark green on that oak, and it just wants to stick, and then it burns deeper. And when you you do your signature, it, you know you run into the same problems. Um, if anybody in the club has taken drafting, that is a a very good uh, precursor to uh, printing <laughs> with the wood burner on wood. So when I Go ahead. So when, when I was in school and I took drafting, you know, they told you how to draw your letters. And our teacher could pick up on it real quick. If you, if you made a circle with your pen instead of two parentheses to make a zero, you know, so you're basically pulling your pen down on, on the left side, then you start back top middle, you pull your, your pencil down on the right side to make uh, like the letter O, um, he would pick up on that and he would say, no, go do it again. It's not, you know, it's not clear enough. And that technique is excellent for using with your pen when you're doing letters. So just kind of keep that in mind. So when I'm being real careful, <clears throat> almost all of my letters will be made with a pull stroke. So, um, uh, you know, take, Take that for what it's worth, but it helps a lot. Don't try to do a circle with the pen because it'll stick, it'll catch, um, and it'll be irregular. Uh, next three slides are just going to be some textures, and I, I call this stamping, you know, for lack of another word. On the left-hand side, I took a highlighter, and I showed what just the bare stamp would look like and different things that you can do with it. So you could overlap circles, you could take a half a circle and you can make uh, different things. Uh, that's a bolt. I took a, a brass bolt and I filed the head somewhat flat. And then you could use that to fill in. Um, these were some tips that came with the $24 uh, burner and I really like the top three it's basically the same tip but it's different textures that you can put in so the first one is uh, kind of a, a, a sloppy I'll call it a you know like a, a fish scale kind of a thing where you're just doing a somewhat random and you're pulling the pulling it across and then I went over it again with some dark uh, uh, stamps the second row is uh, a more geometric pattern of like a fish scale and I like how that looks quite a bit. The third one I dragged them across and then the first one the first half of that left to right is one direction and then on the second half you can go in two directions and you get a cross hatching and it gives you a completely different feel. And then you have the dot so you again you can you can be random and I know a lot of people have have used that stippling effect uh, very very well it, it turns out well on your objects or you can use it with another you know line thing and you can create uh, more geometric patterns um, the stippling with the dot there again and then over to the right on that half was the dot with a shader so after you stippled it I still took a shading tool and darkened the wood over the top and then uh, the bottom is, is, is just some lines hash marks between a border. Um, the top one here is a shading tool. So the wood was completely, you know, flat on here and all I used was the shader. And you, this is basically what I do, uh, one of my steps for the basket weave, but this would be the shading tool just by itself. And as you can see, it's real sharp on one side of the line and then it fades out on the other. Um, Again, just another technique with some straight, uh, oh, I'm sorry, the next three was a, was a tool that I, uh, I made that, that has a coil wrapped around it. And it's different, different ways to use that. So you can you know, do a weave pattern, you can do borders, things like that. Um, the fourth one down is uh, a little horseshoe shaped piece of wire that I put a texture on. And so you could see in each one of those half moons, it looks like a, like a fish scale on the left side. Uh, there are little lines in there, and um, that adds a nice uh, element. 
And over to the right, you can see by dragging it, it actually adds texture, uh, which is something I do in the basket weed. And then on the bottom, there was more of the uh, horseshoe texture. But that, oh, yeah, not a problem. So it's random on the left, and then over to the right, I tried to create, you know, just some, uh, some casual shapes. So next. Um, this kind of gets into the board, and we'll talk about it in a minute, but this is how I started. Uh, this board I actually made using the, uh, the inexpensive variable temperature pen. And so I did it on purpose. I, you know, I want to make sure everybody understands that you don't have to invest um, a couple hundred bucks into a wood burner to get some really nice um, uh, embellishments on your, on your project. So uh, this particular picture shows on the left, I just started burning the basket weave. And one way to do it is, is like this, where you start with these little tri or the, excuse me, little rectangles with the wood still having the pencil marks. Because the pencil marks are really easy to draw, but then mentally you got to know which ones you're going to burn and which ones you're not going to burn. Um, alternately, you could erase pencil marks if you don't want to burn them, but I find it faster to, I just make a grid and I draw all my lines and then I try to only burn the ones that'll support the basket weave. So I, I don't know if that makes sense, but I'll, I'll show you that in a little bit. And once you get that going, then I just use that sander on it. And so everything to the right is nice and clean and all the pencil marks are gone just to show you that that's my normal process. Um, here is the, uh, the board. And it's, it's the same board, but it's actually finished at this particular point. Um, I'll have the pencil lines on it, and I'll outline some of the rectangles to get started. Then I'll do uh, uh, the opposite, the opposite angled rectangles, because the basket weave is really two different rectangles that are just alternated, re you know, repeated through the whole effect. Uh, then the third step with the basket weave, I start with small cross hatching. Uh, short lines for shadows. Then I go through the whole thing again and I'll add longer lines and I add fewer of them. So it, what it does is it helps to uh, blend in and, and soften um, the shadows that are created. Um, then what I'll do is I'll use the shading tip which again is a little more uh, solid of a burn uh, but not as deep. And that'll go over it, and you can see that the shadowing really starts to pop when you add that. <clears throat> and then I'll go and I'll darken the voids. I darken the holes for the background. I'll add texture, which is one of those tips that I actually made. Um, and then when I'm all done, I add those highlights, which is just a couple of random, uh, I'll call it lines with the grain. Uh, and it kind of helps make it pop and gives it a little more realism. So that's, uh, that's how the uh, basket weave is basically done. So it's a slow process. You know, it, it's kind of like turning too, if you're hollowing and playing around with some deep, some deep bowls and vessels, you, you, you know, enjoy the moment because it's a pastime. It's, it's not something that should be hurried. This is an example of, um, of a fail. Okay, and the reason is because this is hickory, which is not a whole lot different than you know oak and ash. Um, and I tried to, I tried to burn this, and the pen was just not moving very well, and it was very inconsistent with the, the lines because of the grain. And the grain has uh, you know uh, hard spots and light spots and voids. And I thought I, I thought hickory was a little better than oak, but uh, when I was done with it, I ended up doing more experimenting on this bowl, and it became uh, a practice piece. So I'll pause there and 
Anybody's got any questions? And then I'll we'll dive into some of this. So just, um, just for uh, how many hours would you say you have in that one? Uh, you know, the one where you're showing that. The one. I, I'm I'm sorry, Paul. Which which one were you pointing to? On, on, the, on the chess piece, when you're showing step one, step two, step three, step four. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. How long did that take me? Well, it, first of all, it's not done, right? That was just the. You're talking about this one right here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I probably, I again, I used this pen which is the uh, 25, I'm going to call it $25 uh, kit. And, and I don't know, I got a half know, hour. I got a half 45, hour, probably closer, 45, to, 45 probably closer minutes to 45 into minutes into it. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it and, is. And, and I'll give you a little secret. And I'll give you a little is, secret. Uh, is uh, I now intentionally... Would, I like the borders, first of all. I, I do find them very attractive. I think it enhances the bowls versus overpowers, you know, the wood turning because I still love wood turning. I think wood itself, you know, um, contains a lot of natural beauty that I don't want to lose. Uh, but I also found that if my borders are small, I can do a project quicker. <laughs> so this particular one, uh, this took me four hours, just the burning. And so this is about, I think it's about an inch. I'm just going to guess and say that this is an inch wide. Uh, the bands on here, I'm actually going to measure because that's, an, that's another. You know, that, that's another component of your, of your design is how wide are the, uh, is the, um, the weave and this weave is three about three eighths of an inch wide and I didn't want to go a lot wider but if you go wider you have fewer lines and it goes quicker so uh, when you do that really fine one and and again I really like how this one turned out so this will this will be my marathon piece this will be my marathon piece when I go to do a full vessel. But I got all of these small little weaves down in the bottom. And it, it just, to me, it just turned out really interesting and, and fun. But when I go do a full, a full unit and I go all the way around, I, I couldn't even forecast how long it's going to take me. But... Um, I'll do things like probably I'll have a, a border around the top that I will not burn, border around the bottom that I won't burn, but uh, we'll give her we'll give her a shot, and see what happens. Jim, when you're burning, are you burning? Are you just hand holding the item, or do you? Yeah. You put it in a picture. Yeah. No. In your lap. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, I, I. Uh, I'll throw uh, like a couple of old towels I throw on my lap and, and you can kind of move them around, kind of uh, prop it up so you get a little bit of support on the bowl just the way you want it. You know, the angle of your hand is very important and you want to make sure that your hand is, is comfortable just for um, the comfort aspect of it, but also um, the, the result is better if you have good ergonomics with how you're pulling your stroke and that's the other nice thing about the basket weave is that it's all straight right it's all straight lines and those are the easiest lines to do with a wood burner so you know it's don't don't be intimidated by like a weave um, I, I would encourage everybody to give it a shot because it is straight and once you get a tip with a straight edge on it, and it starts to uh, burn the wood, it guides itself. And then you just need to make sure that you start it out in the right direction. And that's why your hand placement 
up front is so important. If I put my hand at the right orientation to start with, then all of these lines fall right in order. They, they're nice and smooth. Uh, they're parallel to each other. So that's kind of that's kind of my goal when I'm doing that. And, and it, there's a lot of times where I don't feel like burning, but sometimes I'll just start and I'm going like, wow, you know, this this is kind of fun. Boom, boom, boom. And an hour or two later, I was like, oh, time to go in for lunch. Is there a lot of smoke tin with that? Uh, most of my burning done at the five and six setting puts out a small amount of, of, of smoke. When you, when you do the stamping, so like when I was doing this particular one, this is a good example, the weave, the lighter weave on the outside, I had a little bit and you know, I have a fan. Actually, uh, Al Osterman had a couple of fans he brought to class and he came out. And it's just enough to pull the, the air away because you don't want blowing on. Don't ever point a fan at your wood burning. It messes up your temperatures. But if you have it close and it pulls it away, it's effective. Um, so yeah, um, we talked earlier about my fan in the ceiling here in my shop. And if I run that, there's just enough of a circulation in my shop that most of the... Uh, um, uh, smoke that does come floats away. Again, if you're doing stamping though, which I wanted to touch this stuff, the dark stuff, yeah. In fact, Cleet did a real nice vessel uh, probably a year ago, two years ago now, but that was but that was really dark. It was beautiful, but I'm I'm thinking he had a lot of smoke when he did that one. <laughs> I sure did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Tim, Tim, I'm assuming that you put all your lines in pencil. Do you use the lathe? Yeah, on that on that vessel, I did. So, I used the indexing on the lathe. I create I created a little. Um, it was it was basically. A custom table that was cut out to fit right along the edge of um, of that vessel. When when you do it, why don't you go to overhead, Jerry? So I had a piece of wood that was shaped like this, and it went up right tight. And so I would index the vessel. I would draw the line, laying it on the table. Actually, just kind of like Pete uh, does with his basket illusion. And then I would rotate it and then keep drawing the lines. And, uh, and then when I do the, on, that, on this particular one, when I did the uh, horizontal lines, it was obvious. I just put the pencil on the tool rest. Um, but that's, that's an interesting one, too, because like on this one, it might have to swap cameras. So on, on this one right here, because this is at a 45, I took a, a little framing square that I have, and I just set it on here like this, and then I drew the lines and, I, and go all the way around like that. I use a compass. Um, let's see, where did I put my compass here? You know, I, I, I take the... See here, probably better on right here. So I take the compass and I figure out what I want for the border, and I'll rest it on here like this. That's one technique, and this works out really good when the rim is not flat. So I had, you know, one of these. Um, this particular bowl right here was a once turn bowl, and so on the ends, the, it's it's taller than on the sides. So if you wanted to keep the band parallel to the rim, I would use this uh, compass on here and, and draw it around. This particular one I didn't. I wanted to kind of accent the fact that this is high and then on the sides 
on the side grain, it's low. So then I just put my pencil basically on a, a uh, block of wood and I rotated it. So, but the key is, you know, get a nice, nice clean line. Use a sharp pencil because the, the sharper your pencil line is, the easier it is to stay on track. It's amazing that if you use a dull pencil and then you go to burn a, a, a straight line. Was that, was that little square or woodpecker once in a lifetime square? No. <laughs> no, actually, Milwaukee Tool makes a, 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 a knockoff. <laughs> but, right? $69 four inch square. I'd, I'd never benefit from that much accuracy. All right. So let's see here. I think I turned that on. Good. Check my notes. See if I can get back on track here. Um, so we talked about the tools. Um, oh, the wood selection. So, I mean, this is I, everybody here is familiar with the different common woods that we have. And that's very important to have good results, especially early. So I would recommend, you know, you get some basswood. Um, you get some basswood. Cherry is good wood. Um, uh, pine ends up, it's kind of okay, but pine will have that early growth, late growth that does mess with your, uh, your, your consistency. You know, avoid, avoid ash, avoid oak. Um, I just got a bunch, I got a bunch of, you can go to the overhead, Jerry. You know, I got a bunch of tether and, and you can actually see right on them, you know, how, how, how well they, how well they burn. Um, like this is pine. And then when I got some side green, so if you looked at, you know, the rings on here, right? So it's flat sawn. And when you hit the soft wood, you get really nice results. And then when you cross over the, the hard grain, it, it changes. Um, but yeah, any tight grain wood, maple is good. Soft maple tends to be better only because it takes higher temperature to burn the hard maple. And then, uh, like I said, I'll sand it lightly after I get, um, this is the start of the, of the, burning. Once I get to this stage, which all the outline is done, then I'll typically sand the whole thing again. If you sand the wood first, you will have better results uh, with your burning. And then again, I end up sanding it twice just to get rid of the pencil marks. Um, and then practice a lot. That's the key, right? So make sure that you do a lot of practice. So one of, yep. I'm sorry, I need to go. Okay. But this is, this is fascinating stuff. You're doing beautiful job. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Have a good one. Yep, bye now. I think what I had on here, that would have been that. So this is the tool. I'm trying to think how close can I get to this. Will it burn the lens if I touch it? So this particular um, uh, tip on here is diamond shaped because it's cut at an angle. It's a square. It's a square block of brass. I think it started out, and then they actually have. Um, I don't know if you can see it very easily, but they got grooves in it. Is that picking up? Kind of. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. So this is this is something that I like a lot for texturing, and it's and it's the one that did these three. One, two, and then three. And again, if you had, I would recommend you always draw some lines for, for the start, but you know, you, you add a border and you might want to fill this in. So the, this particular setting on here is, uh, I don't have it all the way. Yeah, I guess it is all the way now. Uh, but this would be something where you just go with the repetitive stroke and 
practice before you go on your um, your finished piece because you're gonna you're gonna want to understand both the temperature and the uh, the speed that it's burning. And so right now this is burning pretty fast, and it's going small little pieces because of the angle that I'm on. And you can end up with some really nice effects. And what I like, again, is to, I like creating those borders and then filling on the inside. The other thing that I, that I like doing is combining two and three, two or three different textures, two or three different tips um, together so that you can get your pattern and you know like the classic is this right here so what I did on this particular bowl is first I drew the lines all the way around it so I had the border I used a small tip that does the three dots and if you see if you see like right here above there's three dots and that's one burn and then I move it uh, I don't know a sixteenth of an inch and do it again and I would go all the way around and then I did the other the other side of it and then I came through with this particular uh, pen uh, let's go the wrong way so this is just a loop but if you look at it it's got a little bit of a bend on it and then uh, that's how I did the, the inside and from from an aesthetic perspective you know the th the three textures together actually creates a very pleasing um, type of uh, pattern and this will go this will go pretty fast you know you could you could do something like this on a on an eight inch bowl without much difficulty so I got my cameraman trying to get a better angle <coughs> And so then you could you could go back to the you could go back to the the textured pen. You know, and this is the stamping technique that I call it. And I would encourage you to go out on like a Pinterest because there's all these different options that other artists have done have done. And and it'll give you some ideas it'll give on you some you ideas on together, what you can pull you know, together from a, you know from a from a burning perspective yeah, i'm going to go back to is that still hot yeah so the the pins the pens are pretty versatile you, you remember that it's a three-dimensional object and you can use the left side of it you can use the right side of it you can use straight you can angle it so even though this was this the um, the pen that I used for that little horseshoe uh, imprint I can tip it upside down and I can use it for a writing type of a of a ob item and I can take and I can you know trace over um, the pattern and, and please you know bear with me that I just drew out this pencil line by hand and if I was doing a finished product you know I would use a ruler I would use some type of uh, of an item for maintaining clean sharp angled lines but you know that kind of that kind of stuff uh, ends up to be you know like a nice border around a bowl and then if you wanted to that this is the kind of stuff where you just buy some acrylic paint um, and add a little water to it make it transparent and you can uh, you can take that to the next level and you could you could have it a fall color a summer winter colors and, and different things and and add more creativity to your uh, to your project all right hey, Tim. yep is there any benefit in practicing on paper? <laughs> practicing on paper. So, um, actually, what? Not the actual burning, just drawing. 
Yeah, um, I would say, you know, I would say, yeah, I mean, this, this whole concept is nothing but lines. And you know what? I did one of those. What did I do with that? I wonder if I, I, wonder if I put that in here. I actually did one on paper. Yeah, here it is. Look at that. Did you do that on purpose, Ed? Why don't you swap cameras? Would I do that? <laughs> so I did this on paper, too, to just kind of give you a little heads up. This is graph paper. And again, start with rectangles. And then you go alternate. This is just one, one uh, sequence that you could do. Uh, and then I did it vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal. And then you add a second row, and you end up with these little voids in here. And the voids can be small. They can be large. Your, your vertical uh, rectangles can be different sizes than the horizontals, and that will give you a different weave as well. And then this, again, just like you were saying, uh, Ed, this is single pencil lines. And then I started out with longer and fewer pencil lines. And then I went through and. Uh, Tim, can you send out a photo of that? Send photo? Yeah, yeah, I'd be happy to. And you know, in the books too. There's oh, there's a plethora of books out there. You know, don't dive in too detailed to begin with. You know, so make sure you're doing one that's like an introduction or something that's um, got a variety of, of uh, difficulty to it. This particular one, you know, like it's got beginner projects and it's got uh, intermediates and then advanced. And uh, I mean, the, some of this stuff gets, you know, there's a lot of time invested in these pictures. And you may or may not like th that amount of, of burning. but. The books are huge. That they'll they'll help get you started. There might be a little key aspect of the wood burning that'll prompt you to to take care of. Did you get the book at Barnes and Noble? No, um, I got mine uh, right from I want to say Treeline. So Treeline out of Utah has uh, they actually got a lot of different things. They got the little rotary tools like the dental rotary tools if you're piercing they have the burrs um, so remember when we had uh, Miyatki up at the club you know and he had those little burrs on his uh, I think actually maybe he didn't use them I don't remember but he was talking about the little carbide tip burrs they have those they got two different brands of burning I forgot what it was but razor tip and another one and then they have a lot of different carving accessories. So that's, that's where I got my book, I'm pretty sure. They sell kits if you want to you know, dive into it that way. It'll give you a book. It'll give you a couple of um, the standard pens. And then you're off and running. Uh, let's see here. I was going to do some, some shading. Actually, let's, let's do some of these here first. Now, the nice part about the... Um, you know the the better units is so this particular pen is on right now all I have to do is pull it off and I'm gonna put that pen down and I'm gonna grab let's see here I'm gonna grab this tip now if you look at this tip it's very sharp I actually hone these. They, they have them honed when you buy them. And uh, you're going to turn that one on? Give that a shot. And the, by honing them, the edges are very smooth, and it actually helps. Yep, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I, oh, I see. There. So by honing them, they'll go through your woods more smoothly and it helps your uh, lines uh, become more consistent as well. So I can just plug this in and I'll be up to temperature in a matter of seconds versus what I did, 
what I did with the, uh, oh, you can see it right here, the, this wood burner right there. I plugged that in, <laughs> what, Jerry, 15, 20 minutes bef before, <laughs> before we started. So I got three little things here um, just to kind of show you how, you know, how I would approach it. The first one is the Santa Claus. Um, and then I have some leaves after that, but I'll just go through those real quick. Um, and my fingers are going to be covering, let's see here. Maybe we could, I could, you know what, how about if I just slide over here and then you turn it a little bit also and then, and then we'll, we'll do two things to, to get it rolling. Just do it left handed too. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Everybody's got to get into the air. Right. Okay. That's that's good. I mean, you you can see it a lot better. Yeah. So again, this uh, I, I mentioned it before, which it it kind of lends to being mentioned or emphasized is don't think you need to be boxed in by straight solid lines and this Santa Claus is like the classic and it's easy to relate because the beard is not straight the beard has texture to it um, you know you might have you know some some of those beards even have you know stray hair flying all these different directions if you looked at actually if you looked at um, you know the owl there's, there is no straight lines outlining anything. It's, it's other than maybe the eyes a little bit and the claws, I guess. But the rest of it is all a series of dashes. And that can be extremely effective when you're trying to create, you know, just a, a pleasant picture. So, um, again, this was with the carbon paper. I took carbon paper and I just uh, traced it out. Um, you can see right now I have it. I should have done a test. So here's your first don't do, um, which is don't make the first pass with your pen <laughs> onto your finished product. So I would always recommend that you get a scrap and you check out the temperature and I, ideally it's the same wood. So I'm going to grab another different block here. So this supposedly is Aspen, but because this one was actually glued up, I bought this at Menards. These three pieces all have different hardnesses. And so when you're drawing lines across from here through here, you'll end up that line will have different temperatures on it. But anyways, make sure that you touch your pen to, to a piece of scrap first. And it, this is for two reasons. One, it tells you what the temperature is. But the other thing it does is it cools the tip off. So this tip is so small that just touching the wood that you're burning will change the temperature on it. Another advanced tip <laughs> that I wasn't going to give you till later is that if you're drawing a line like this and you stop because you're, you run out of room or your fingers don't move any further, but you want, you want that to go further. You want it to be a long line. When you go to put it back in there, you know, my hands shake. Um, they're, they're not that steady and I get right down to it. And all of a sudden I, there it is. That's where I want to go. And then look at my line. I get this big wide f fat glob and you're going like, ah, oh, that's not what I wanted. I wanted the line to be nice and smooth and and uh, the only way to do that is to have a consistent temperature so what you do to resolve that is that you start with your your pen and, and again you you want to learn what the temperature is it'll it'll always be darker when you start because the pen is hot it cools down as you pull it so when you see these they kind of look I don't know what you want to call it, like a comet. 
And that's because it's hot when it starts and it cools down as, as you pull it through the wood. We can use that to our advantage. So if I wanted to pick this line up and continue making that, I can actually blow on it. And I will cool that pen down enough where I can get back into that groove and maintain the same, the same thickness um, of line. So that's just one of those little things. But I'm also looking at the temperature. I'm burning a little hotter than I would like to. So I'm going to, you know, I was at five. I'm going to turn this particular one down to four. That'll give you a little bit more um, temperature control. So when, when you do the, let's see here. When you do the beard then on Santa, um, you know, this is where you get into curved lines and then this muscle memory with your hand where I'm taking and I'm rotating the, the tool while I'm pulling through these short strokes. That's a good thing to learn. So you kind of go like that, and like that. You don't have to stay in the line. Nobody knows if you were in the line or not. So there you get the beard. This particular tip has um, a round nose on it um, that's beneficial for making curves. However, when they're really tight like this, it's not uh, the optimal. What, what you do is you would go with a tip. Let's see if I can hold them over the white table. It's easier to see. Um, you go with a tip that's sharper. And what happens is as it burns the wood, it allows you to rotate it. So this straight edge on here is not good um, for doing medium sized curves because the straight edge on the tip wants to keep the burn going straight. When you have a round one on a, on a medium to large curve, it's more forgiving. It allows you to, to create those nice um, curves. But when you have small curves, like this, the, the fluffiness on this Santa, um, you use the very tip of this uh, spear point. And if you turn up the temperature just a little bit, it actually burns the wood out of the way so that the, uh, the straightness on the knife is kind of um, uh, nullified. So because that tip doesn't go in very far, you can get nice little curls out of a straight tip if you're going straight at it. So in effect, it just burns the wood out of the way so it doesn't uh, take your pen off in the wrong direction. And then I'll do these little mistletoes. The other thing, like I said, is don't worry about staying in your line. The line is just a starting point. Um, you're quite a few of, of my burn marks do not follow the pattern that I drew on with the pencil. And uh, you erase them and nobody knows. And now, like here we have this fluffy, the fluffy little uh, tassel on his hat. And again, what I would do on something like this is that you could almost just stipple that whole edge, right, with your pen and rotate it a little bit because you don't want them all going the same direction. But by stippling something that's fuzzy, then you no longer have that line and you get the added the added benefit of, of texture with your picture in this particular case. So,
All right. So I'm just going to stop right there on this particular one. And uh, I'm going to quick sand that off. So we're going to get rid of his face on there, but that'll just show you how we expose. So now you get the outline and then the lines will pop. You may uh, sand off a little bit of the burning and it's not uncommon for me to go back and, and redo a couple of the lines. but. You know, that's, that's how you do a quick outline. Um, I like doing the leaves, too, for another uh, nice, pleasant item that's easy to do. And these are all just uh, arcs. And so you can do the stems. Can you see that okay? Trying to, get the Trying to get a little bit better. Okay. Do you, I have a, another block if you want to put it underneath and then add another block on top for weight. You want to uh, maybe tip it? This is better, isn't it? Uh, yeah. I, Let's see. Seems better. Yeah, I think it's going to stay. Okay. So I just did three swoops, and these are the stems of the leaves. And then, uh, you know, this is that muscle memory thing again where you do a bunch of leaves in practice, and it just becomes second nature because you, you know exactly how you have to pull it through the wood and uh, uh, how long your, your uh, pen stroke needs to be. And my leaves have morphed. Initially, I tried to... Um, to draw the leaves and then burn them exactly as I drew them. And I found out I'm better off going on scrap and drawing a leaf with the wood burner, getting a, getting a pattern that I like. You know, and um, you know, like here's an example, right? So it's my practice board. I just kept playing around and I'm thinking, well, here's an option and then here's another leaf. and Here's things that I can do. This one, I, I stamped a leaf design. And once you get, I'm just going to call it an easy method, that's the leaf that I settled on for the design. So, you know, don't think that you have to, um, that you've got to copy the pattern that you find that you, uh, that you like. You can tweak it to be exactly what works um, with your, with your own tool and your own uh, muscle memory. So there's my leaves, and those are done. What I did uh, with one of these, and I showed it on an earlier one. Actually, can you hand me the one with the green leaves on it? I don't want to reach over my wood burners. I'm going to torch myself eventually. So all I did with this one then is I used that acrylic paint. I watered it down, and these are almost the same leaves is what I just did here and then I just dab that on there the stem and not the, yeah I guess you call it the stem line in the middle shines right through and it gives you a very very nice effect now another another option uh, for leaves is the stamping like I just showed you on that test piece and also, don't forget that stems aren't always just one line. A lot of times, stems are two lines. They'll be, a, you know, the left side and the right side. So you, you might want to practice doing two lines very close together that taper into one. And so this particular stem starts out thick, and then it finishes off nice and thin. But in order to put leaves on this one, I'm going to use a shader. I'm going to use a shader in a little different way. Earlier I said, you know, your tips are three dimensional. So this particular one is kind of a spoon shader. Um, if you could see it, 
you know, as close as I'm at, the bottom is actually uh, convex. So if I would just, if I just touch the bottom to the wood, I get um, a burn mark with no defined edges. It's, it fades, if you can see that. And I'll, I'll try to do it again, but chances are I'm not going to hit it square. Yeah, there we go. So you get a dark mark in the middle, and it fades out on the edges. So that's what a shader is supposed to do. But also, the shader does have some defined edges. So if I would tip this shader on the side, I get these little flat, leafy designs on it, right? And so what I can do is I can leverage that little tiny design right there onto this particular branch. And so what I'll do is I'll, I'll uh, I, normally I would practice, but I've done this one a lot, so I'll probably not be really clean with it, but um, you'll get the you'll get the effect. And what I want to do is, as I get more toward the tip, I want to go lighter and lighter and make them smaller. And then on the right hand or on the other side, I'll use the right hand edge of the shading tool. <coughs> And this one was a real popular design on those spoons that I made. And uh, a lot of the people that got them really, really liked them. And I, I went kind of fast here, but um, you, get the, you get the idea. So here's a stamping effect in order to create the leaf. And, you know, it, it pops out real quick. So I'm going to take the shader off. And again, this is the benefit of a better burner. These tips get, they get hot in a hurry. And I go back to this, the spear tip, which is a uh, straight blade, um, sharp point. And I didn't know if you could see this, but I have a pencil mark of like one large leaf right here. And again, a lot of the leaves that are out do not have defined edges. They might be they're kind of fuzzy or jagged. And that'll actually add to the, uh, to the appeal of your wood burning if you can use it to your benefit. Another little tip. Now remember, remember when I was doing this, this over here, um, you start your line. <clears throat> it's always hotter when you first touch it to the wood. And then as you draw it through the wood, the tip cools off and, and the line gets narrower. So use that to your advantage in the case of like a leaf because the stem will always be thicker at the start of the leaf and it, you know, how they get really tiny and thin when it gets to the tip of the leaf. So don't, you know, don't start at the tip, start at the base of the leaf and pull into it and your gouge will, you know, uh, cool off and make a thinner line and it naturally uh, uh, supports how the leaf looks. So on this one I drew the outline, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a series of hatches that don't even necessarily have to touch each other. And there's different, there's different techniques. You can make them um, stand out so that it's it looks fuzzy um, and it looks like you got little spiky edges on the leaf <laughs> or uh, another thing that I found to be a, a nice looking edge was to roll that tip back into itself so you're you're basically going and then the next line that I'm doing actually touches the end of the previous line. So you're kind of getting rid of the, the fuzziness on the end, 
but you can still see on the inside of the leaf that that jaggedness is there. And so that'll give you um, a, a similar but different edge. So on the one side of the leaf, you know, I, I had these tails kind of going out into space. And on this other line, I had the tails actually tuck into the next line. And so, you know, it gives you just different appeal. So some things you, you can do when you're doing the line drawings. <coughs> so let's see. I can, I can flip this over. So now on the basket weave. So if I was doing um, a weave, one of the one of the things that I I like is to create that you know the visual interest. And there's there's two ways you can do that. I mean, there's a lot of ways you can do that. Um, but on you know on 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 a weave like this, both the horizontal and the vertical uh, are the same. So there's the same width, there's the same spacing. So then on something like this, the horizontal was wide, and then, excuse me, the, the vertical was wide, and then the horizontal was narrow. And that, to me, that adds another uh, element of interest. So in order to uh, lay these out, all I do is, is uh, grab something that gives me spacing. And a ruler will do it. But one of my favorite things, especially on the bowls, is I just take a piece of pa lined paper. And there's different, you know, you can get narrow spacing or wide spacing, so that'll, that'll help. But you don't have to use every line either. And so what I would do is I would lay this down and... Um, and let's say I go one, two, I'm, I'm, I'm going wide for the, um, what, what do you call an individual weave? You know, I should talk to my basket weaving friend. You know what I mean? So it's, anybody on the line know that? My friend Jimmy Mitchell's actually took up basket weaving, and he does some beautiful work, him and, a, and another friend, uh, Mark Weslowski, and there's these horizontal with the strips. You know, they use ash. They use a lot of different strips. It's wood strips, but anyway. So the vertical, this one will be two uh, spaces wide. I'm going to have a, a background or a void of one space. Then I'm going to go two. Then I'm going to go one, two, and then one. Two, one, and then uh, I'll take my my square, and this may not be quite as as clean as I want, but I would take a little more time if I'm doing it on one of my bowls. All right, so that's my vertical, and I'm going to switch to ruler. And then I'm going to go with some skinny, some narrow um, horizontals right here. You know, I just thought about this, but I could alternate. That'd be another way to add some uh, some interest to it. So here's my grid. Very simple. Um, it it can be a little bit intimidating, especially when you have a large panel of it, right? So uh, the easiest thing to do is just to start out with one rectangle. Now I have seen 
some basket weaves where there is no void. Okay, so that is an option. So you, where you would not have any background. Um, so like, instead of having these, like the white space that's in here, the members would actually touch. And one of the, you know, one of the better ones that I've seen then, instead of being a rectangle, they actually kind of make it look like it, um, like it's a little warped and they, like they squeeze next to each other, which it would do if it was natural. You know, it, they kind of contort a little bit. Is it almost 11 o'clock already? Yeah. I'll be there. Um, so that would be a way to do it. But I'm not going to at this time. So what we can do is we can say, well, where is our, our uh, wood strips? And so I have three wood strips. I have one at the top, I got one in the middle, and I got one in the bottom. And so just grab that particular one and just say, okay, this wood strip is going to be the square in the middle. It's going to be the square in the middle, but it has to be rectangular, so I need to add one square on both sides of it. So it's going to be three. And so just start with your first one. And so I'm going to go and then outline this. Go like that, and then like that, and then like that, and like that. So that's, that's our first, uh, first piece. So what it's saying is that this horizontal piece is, is going to intersect with this particular one. And to do it the first time, you may even want to shade it, right? So we could, we could go through and we could say, okay, this is what's going to show. And then it goes underneath this one. Now this has got to be the same. The vertical one also has to be three squares, but it has to be three in the opposite direction. So this one would be these three here. And so then you go and you burn that one in. Now one of these lines is common. So once you get familiar with the effect, you can do them all at once. And then we'll go this way. And so then if that's true, where we got those two, all I have to do is repeat the pattern. So then I'm going to do these three on this end. And I just, I just created uh, the start of a first pattern. And now if I start on the second row, it's going to be 90 degrees to the very first square. And then these end up being the voids. Like that. And time kind of got away from me, so I apologize. but. Uh, didn't realize we're already into this almost two hours. So at that particular point, you know, I would, I would just keep going like I like I have on the board here. Uh, this starts to build up like, like the second square, and. Do one more, so then it repeats. <clears throat> and now I I did a lot of pencil marks on there, just kind of for sh for showing it. I'm just saying that off quick. So now I got the start of the basket weave going on right there. So um, the, 
the, uh, the short strokes, like right on here, you know, what I would do would be take your, your pen and it's, this is where it gets very monotonous, but it's also easy because you start to get a feel for the stroke and then you, and you put that on your, uh, on your, uh, burning. You can do all of those lines that are the same. Um, you keep your hand in the same position you, and you move your, uh, your object around and then you go to the next one, which is longer strokes. So once these short ones are in place, then you do fewer, but longer. And it starts, it starts to give you that effect. And so then once, once those strokes are on there, then you can take your shader and then you, you go across that edge. And notice I went into this void right here because the void naturally will get dark on you as you do your lines. So when I do all four shadows, that void will, that void will almost darken itself and then you just come back in later and you fill it. And so then this would just get, you, you touch that a couple of times and the void is filled. So I think what I'll do is stop right there. Um, again, I go through a couple of quick tips. You know, make sure that you you practice and you and you on you practice on the same kind of wood that you're going to put your final design on. Um, you know, be comfortable with the temperature and the speed of your pen. Um, use good wood, so. You know, especially early, because you have enough complications that you don't need to have wood difficult uh, to make your experience less enjoyable. And then start simple. You know, start with some stamping. Start with some um, some stick men. You know, the Santas and stuff like that. So that's kind of where where I'm at. Any questions? I'll throw it out to the group. Well, thank you. Thank you. I actually, time got away from, I didn't want to make it two hours. <laughs> yeah. But that's what happens for me though, too, is when I, you know, I'm talking now while I'm doing it. And my wife says I talk to myself anyways, but I don't notice that I'm talking to myself when I'm by myself. <laughs>